Now we've got to find then the impulse that Q gives P when they collide. And to do this I would want to mark in that impulse. It acts towards the left and I'm going to call it I. And to work out impulse we've got to remember that impulse is equal to change in momentum. In other words the final momentum minus the initial momentum. But momentum is a vector quantity so you've got to be very careful in questions like this. Make sure you set up a positive sense. So if we consider P, let's just mark that in then, if we consider P, tell the reader that you're considering that particular particle P. We'll take positive in the direction of the impulse. You don't have to do that but it is a lot better if you do that. Okay, So positive in the direction of the impulse. So when it comes to working out then the impulse, the impulse I, it's going to be equal to the final momentum mv, so we've got the mass just happens to be m, multiplied by the velocity. Well we can see that the speed is 2u and it's to the left, which is in the positive sense, so the velocity is going to be plus 2u, or just simply 2u. Then we've got to subtract the initial momentum, the mass is m, and now we've got to multiply it by the velocity u. Now the speed is 4u initially to the right, but that's in the negative sense okay, of the direction here. So it's going to have a velocity of minus 4u. So take care over that bit. So what we have now is 2mu plus 4mu, a total of 6mu. And the units for impulse would be newton seconds, so 6 mu newton seconds. Now, you don't have to consider P just to work out what the impulse I is, although I would think that would be the sensible thing to do in this question. No, impulse is exactly the same on Q, only it acts in the opposite direction. So I'll take you through how you could have worked it out if you had considered Q. The impulse is still I, but it acts in the opposite sense. So if we were considering Q, let's just mark that in there, this time though take the positive sense in the direction of I, which would be to the right. And if we take the impulse I, what's it going to equal? What I've done is I've updated this diagram. Originally this was KU and this was a half KU but we found in the previous part that K was 4 thirds so I've updated it as 4 thirds U and half that value 2 thirds U. So when it comes to the impulse change in momentum we need to do the final momentum MV but the mass this time is 3M so we've got 3M multiplied by the final velocity. Well it's two-thirds u, you can see that it's in the positive sense here, so it'll be two-thirds u. Then we subtract the initial momentum. The mass though is now 3m, and when it comes to the initial velocity we can see the speed is four-thirds u acting to the left in the opposite sense to this, so the velocity, the initial velocity, will be minus four thirds u. So again, take care over that bit. Now if we work out what the first term is, we end up with the threes cancelling, so we just end up with two mu, and then we've got the two minuses there replaced with a plus, and the threes cancel, leaving us with four mu. And if we add those two together, you can see you got 6mu. Same answer as before, showing that the value of I, the impulse, was exactly the same, but in opposite directions. So you could use either particle, it doesn't matter to work out what that impulse is.